Jean-Dominique Antony Metzinger was a major 20th-century French painter, theorist, writer, critic and poet, who along with Albert Gleisers, developed the theoretical foundations of Cubism. His earliest works, from 1900 to 1904, were influenced by the Neo-Impressionism of Georges Seurat and Henry Edmund Cross. Between 1904 and 1907, Metzinger worked in the Divisionist and Fauvist styles with a strong Cezannean component, leading to some of the first proto-Cubist works. From 1908 Metzinger experimented with the faceting of form, a style that would soon become known as Cubism. His early involvement in Cubism saw him both as an influential artist and principal theorist of the movement. The idea of moving around an object in order to see it from different viewpoints is treated, for the first time, in Metzinger's Note sur la Penture, published in 1910. Before the emergence of Cubism, painters worked from the limiting factor of a single viewpoint. Metzinger, for the first time, in Note sur la Penture, enunciated the interest in representing objects is remembered from successive and subjective experiences within the context of both space and time. Jean Metzinger and Albert Gleisers wrote the first major treatise on Cubism in 1912, entitled Du Cubisme. Metzinger was a founding member of the Section Door group of artists. Metzinger was at the center of Cubism both because of his participation and identification of the movement when it first emerged, because of his role as intermediary among the bateau Lavoir group and the Section d'Or Cubists, and above all because of his artistic personality. During the First World War Metzinger furthered his role as a leading Cubist with his co-founding of the second phase of the movement referred to as crystal cubism. He recognized the importance of mathematics in art, through a radical geometrization of form as an underlying architectural basis for his wartime compositions. The establishing of the basis of this new perspective and the principles upon which an essentially non-representational art could be built, led to La Penture A. Says Lois, written by Albert Gleises in 1922-23. As post-war reconstruction began, a series of exhibitions at Elie Acute once Rosenberg's Galerie de la Fort Moderne were to highlight order and allegiance to the aesthetically pure, the collective phenomenon of Cubism, now in its advanced revisionist form, became part of a widely discussed development in French culture. With Metzinger at its helm, crystal cubism was the culmination of a continuous narrowing of scope in the name of a return to order, based upon the observation of the artist's relation to nature, rather than on the nature of reality itself. In terms of the separation of culture and life, this period emerges as the most important in the history of modernism. For Metzinger, the classical vision had been an incomplete representation of real things based on an incomplete set of laws, postulates and theorems. He believed the world was dynamic and changing in time, that it appeared different depending on the point of view of the observer. Each of these viewpoints were equally valid according to underlying symmetries inherent in nature. For inspiration, Niels Bohr, the Danish physicist and one of the principal founders of quantum mechanics, hung in his office a large painting by Metzinger, La Femme au Cheval, a conspicuous early example of mobile perspective implementation. Early life, Jean Metzinger came from a prominent military family. His great-grandfather, Nicolas Metzinger, captain in the 1st Horse Artillery Regiment and Chevalier of the Legion of Honor, had served under Napoleon Bonaparte. A street in the 6 e arrondissement of Nantes was named after Jean's grandfather, Charles Henry Metzinger. Following the early death of his father, Eugene Francois Metzinger, Jean pursued interests in mathematics, music and painting, though his mother, a music professor by the name of Eugenie Louise Argoud, had ambitions of his becoming a medical doctor. Jean's younger brother Maurice would become a musician, excelling as a cellist. By 1900 Jean was a student at Académie Cours Cambron in Nantes, working under Hippolyte Torrent. 
a well-known portrait painter who taught an academic, conventional style of painting. Metzinger, however, was interested in the current trends in painting. Metzinger sent three paintings to the Salon des Independents in 1903, and subsequently moved to Paris with the proceeds from their sale. From the age of 20, Metzinger supported himself as a professional painter. He exhibited regularly in Paris from 1903, participating in the first Salon de Rotomne the same year and taking part in a group show with Raoul Dufy. Lejeune and Torrent, from 19 January 22 February 1903 at the gallery run by Berthy Weil, with another show November 1903. Metzinger exhibited at Berthy Weil's gallery 23 November 21 December 1905 and again 14 January 10 February 1907, with Robert de Lune. In 1908 with André de Rain, Fernand Ledger and Pablo Picasso, and 28 April 28 May 1910 with de Rain, Ruo and Keyes van Dongen. He would show four more times at Viles Gallery, 17 January 1 February 1913 March 1913, June 1914 and February 1921. It is at Berthy Viles that he would meet Max Jacob for the first time. Berthy Viles was also the first Parisian art dealer to sell works of Picasso. Along with Picasso and Metzinger, she helped discover Matisse, Durain, Amadeo Modigliani and Utrillo. In 1904 Metzinger exhibited six paintings in the Divisionist style at the Salon des Independents and the Salon de Rotomne. In 1905 Metzinger exhibited eight paintings at Salon des Independents. In this exhibition Metzinger is directly associated with the artist soon to be known as Favas. Camoin, De Lune, De Rain, Vain Dongen, Dufy, Friche, Manguin, Marquet, Matisse, Valtate, Flamink and others. Matisse is in charge of the Hanging Committee, assisted by Metzinger, Bonnard, Camoin, Lapid Luce, Manguin, Marquet, Puy and Valotten. In 1906 Metzinger exhibits at the Salon des Independents. Once again he is elected member of the Hanging Committee, with Matisse, Signac and others. Again with the Favis and associated artists, Metzinger exhibits at the 1906 Salon de Rotomne, Paris. He exhibits six works at the 1907 Salon des Independents, followed by the presentation of two works at the 1907 Salon de Rotomne. In 1906 Metzinger met Albert Gleises at the Salon des Independents, and visited his studio in Courbevoie several days later. In 1907, at Max Jacobs' room, Metzinger met Guillaume Kratovsky, who already signed his works Guillaume Apollinaire. In 1908 a poem by Metzinger, Parole sur la Lune, was published in Guillaume Apollinaire's La Poésie Symbolista. From 21 December 1908 to 15 January 1909, Metzinger exhibited at the Gallery of Wilhelm UHD, Rue Notre Dame des Champs with Georges Braque. Sonia de Lune, André de Rain, Raoul Dufy, August Herbin, Jules Passon and Pablo Percasso. 1908 continued with the Salon de l'Artoise en Dor, Moscow. Metzinger exhibited five paintings with Braque, de Rain, Vain Dongen, Friche, Manguin, Marquet, Matisse, Puy, Valtate and others. At the 1909 Salon de Rotomne Metzinger exhibited alongside Constantin Brancusi, Henri Le Fauconnier and Fernand Ledger. Jean Metzinger married Lucy Soubron in Paris on 30 December of the same year. Neo-Impressionism, Divisionism By 1903, Metzinger was a keen participant in the Neo-Impressionist revival led by Henry Edmund Cross. By 1945, Metzinger began to favor the abstract qualities of larger brush strokes and vivid colors. Following the lead of Sura and Cross, he began incorporating a new geometry into his works that would free him from the confines of nature as any artwork executed in Europe to date. 
The departure from naturalism had only just begun. Metzinger, along with Dorain, de Lune, Matisse, between 1905 and 1910, helped to revivify Neo-Impressionism, albeit in a highly altered form. In 1906 Metzinger had acquired enough prestige to be elected to the hanging committee of the Salon des Independents. He formed a close friendship at this time with Robert de Lune, with whom he shared an exhibition at Berthyville early in 1907. The two of them were singled out by one critic in 1907 as divisionists who used large, mosaic-like cubes to construct small but highly symbolic compositions. Robert Herbert writes, Metzinger's neo-impressionist period was somewhat longer than that of his close friend de Lune. At the Independence in 1905, his paintings were already regarded as in the neo-impressionist tradition by contemporary critics, and he apparently continued to paint in large mosaic strokes until some time in 1908. The height of his neo-impressionist work was in 1906 and 1907, when he and de Lune did portraits of each other in prominent rectangles of pigment. The vibrating image of the sun in Metzinger's painting, and so too of de Lune's Paysage au Disque, is an homage to the decomposition of spectral light that lay at the heart of neo-impressionist color theory, Jean Metzinger's mosaic-like. Divisionist technique had its parallel in literature, a characteristic of the alliance between symbolist writers and neo-impressionist artists. I ask of divided brushwork not the objective rendering of light, but iridescences and certain aspects of color still foreign to painting. I make a kind of chromatic versification and for syllables I use strokes which, variable in quantity, cannot differ in dimension without modifying the rhythm of a pictorial phraseology destined to translate the diverse emotions aroused by nature. Robert Herbert interprets Metzinger's statement. What Metzinger meant is that each little tile of pigment has two lives. It exists as a plane whose mere size and direction are fundamental to the rhythm of the painting and, secondly, it also has color which can vary independently of size and placement. This is only a degree beyond the preoccupations of Signac and Cross but an important one. Writing in 1906, Louis Chassevent recognized the difference, and as Daniel Robbins pointed out in his Gleiser's catalogue, used the word cube, which later would be taken up by Louis Varxels to baptize cubism. M. Metzinger is a mosaicist like M. Signac, but he brings more precision to the cutting of his cubes of color which appear to have been made mechanically. The interesting history of the word cube goes back at least to May 1901 when Jean Beryl, reviewing Cross's work at the Independence in Arte Literature, commented that he uses a large and square pointillism, giving the impression of mosaic. One even wonders why the artist has not used cubes of solid matter diversely colored. They would make pretty revetments. Metzinger, followed closely by de Lune, the two often painting together, 1906-7, would develop a new sub-style that had great significance shortly thereafter within the context of their cubist works. Piet Mondrian, in the Netherlands, developed a similar mosaic-like divisionist technique circa 1909. The futurists later would adapt the style, thanks to Gino Severini's Parisian experience, into their dynamic paintings and sculpture. In 1910 Gellette Burgess writes in The Wild Men of Paris, Metzinger once did gorgeous mosaics of pure pigment, each little square of color not quite touching the next so that an effect of vibrant light should result. He painted exquisite compositions of cloud and cliff and sea. He painted women and made them fair, even as the women upon the boulevards fair. But now, translated into the idiom of subjective beauty, into this strange neoclassic language, those same women, redrawn, appear in stiff, crude, nervous lines in patches of fierce color, instead of copying nature. Metzinger explained circa 1909, we create a milieu of our own, wherein our sentiment can work itself out through a juxtaposition of colors. 
It is hard to explain it, but it may perhaps be illustrated by analogy with literature and music. Your own Edgar Poe did not attempt to reproduce nature realistically. Some phase of life suggested an emotion, as that of horror or in the fall of the House of Usher, that subjective idea he translated into art. He made a composition of it, so music does not attempt to imitate nature's sounds, but it does interpret and embody emotions awakened by nature through a convention of its own, in a way to be aesthetically pleasing.